Hello, everyone. Welcome for welcome to the slot request walkthrough webinar. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we are going to get started in just a brief couple of minutes. I'm just giving everyone time to join in as I'm seeing those numbers trickle through. Um, in the meantime, while you guys wait, I do want to apologize to all of you. It seems that uh, GoToWebinar um, included the link to a previous uh, presentation and not the actual one. So I did go ahead and um, contact each one of the registered um, participants and sent them the correct one. So you should have the correct one. I did go ahead and make uh, just some tiny tweaks to the presentation. I added uh, one additional slide after slide eight. Uh, so if you would like to have the most up to date uh, slides, go ahead and uh, get that information from the handout section on your GoToWebinar control panel. Um, if not, just kind of make a note that there will be an additional slide you may not have in your original slides um, after slide eight. Um, so feel free to grab those. As always, feel free to make any questions that you have in the questions box. I will be monitoring those uh, questions as we go through the presentation. We will be uh, going through the system again, like we did last time, showing you the process in the actual system rather than just showing you the screenshots in the presentation. And we did get some feedback that um, all while the questions were great, um, it was a bit of a stop and go situation during la the last presentation. So we will be holding specific uh, kind of stopping sections throughout the webinar after presenting some of the content to allow everyone to see the full work uh, process and then answer those questions right after. But don't feel discouraged. Go ahead and add your questions in the questions box. We will be answering those as we go. But for kind of answering or voicing those questions out, we'll have um, kind of just set times to do that after showing you uh, things in the system. And I just have a question here. Hi, so this, this is the newest presentation, the one in the handout section. Yes, that will be the newest one. I just made one tiny tweak, um, one more slide, and then I think I added um, some, you'll notice that in the presentation in the top right corner of some of those slides, there is like a magenta looking um, tab that kind of says sessions, it says uh, site data. So I added a couple more of those just to kind of keep everyone um, centered in terms of what we were talking about. So I added a couple more of those in a slide after slide eight. So the newest ones will be in the handout section, yes. Perfect, awesome, all right. So it looks like we have a good number of people. Um, I believe that uh, Beck Rothke was supposed to present this morning, and it seems that he is having some technical difficulties logging on to uh, this uh, webinar. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started, but you guys, um, when C joins on, we can kind of catch up, but we'll go ahead and get started since I know we have a lot of content to cover, and I wanna make sure we show you guys the full process. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Okay, and let me know if you're able to see my screen. I'm gonna go ahead and go into the presentation mode. So you should be seeing the first slide of the presentation. I did get, um, I think a couple of people that were having trouble with the audio and um, seeing the presentation. So I just wanna make sure that we are able to, uh, everyone is able to see the screen. So if you're not able to see anything on your presentation or your screen, please let me know. It looks like I have one hand raised. Um, Jennifer, does that mean that you're not able to see the uh, presentation? I do have everyone on mute. Uh, so the main communication um, will be through the questions box. So feel free to add in the questions box if you are not able to see the screen. Okay, so I have someone saying that you cannot hear me. And someone says the audio is cutting off. Is that the case for anyone else? I can hear you better now. I can hear you well. I see the slides just fine. I can hear you fine. Okay, I'm seeing a few more people that are able to hear me okay. All right, so I'll go ahead and kind of keep my mic close and hope that that does the trick, but please feel free to add on here in the questions box. Oh, okay, wonderful. It seems like everyone can hear me a little bit better. 
All right, so let's go ahead and get started now that we have those technical issues out of the way. Um, so today's uh, topic is going to be all about the slot request. And we're first going to help you prepare for the slot request. What should you do before you even start your slot request process? Then we'll go ahead and talk about the actual configuration. Then we'll talk about scheduling your emails. As always, you have two options, so we'll go over both. And then we'll talk about some next steps and what you can look forward to um, for the big day. All right, so preparing for your slot request. Uh, so before you can even begin your slot request, um, this isn't like a prerequisite, it won't stop you from starting your slot request, but something you do wanna keep in mind is that you wanna create all of your sessions that you will include in your mailing. Uh, this will help you uh, through the process just because a slot request does have a step in there where it asks you to select your sessions. If they're not created yet, you have to select a placeholder before you can move to the next step. So if you don't want to go through that kind of workaround, um, we recommend you create your sessions first. And as always, when you're creating a session, you will get an option to either create or clone. And cloning will save you a bunch of time. It will copy over some of the activities that you have your students complete. And it's a pretty easy process. So cloning can save you some time when you're doing that. If you've already created your sessions um, before this uh, webinar, then you can kind of follow along with us. And if not, we'll kind of let you know what workaround you can do to kind of um, go along through the process with us as well. And to create those, you'll go over to placements by session. You'll click on add session, and then you'll select your option. You'll add in your dates, your activities, all of that jazz, and then that will um, be able to let you move forward. Some of the common issues you may run into as you're creating your sessions, um, you may have a calendar missing when you select your calendar year. You might be looking for calendar 2023, 2024, and the system does not automatically add those years for you. So you do have to go in there and add it yourself. So if you run into that issue, you're able to add that yourself by going to configuration, configure calendar year. It's a quick add. Another thing is that you may not have your incoming cohort present within the system yet. You may not have that student list finalized yet, or you may not know who they are yet. And that's totally fine. The system allows you to add a folder um, or just kind of like a shell of where your students will be housed. So you can add in the class of 2025, 2026, but not the actual students. That's not a problem that can come at a later time. And to do that, you'll go to configuration and student batch. Before we move on to show you those two screens, you will see um, in every one of your sessions, there is this field here, show on slot request form. Um, and that is always defaulted to yes every time you create a new session. But as you move um, on in time, some, so some of the sessions you may not want to include in your mailing. So something from 2018, you may not want to show there. So you may have turned this off for some of your sessions. You just want to make sure that this is set to yes for any of the sessions you'll want to include in your mailing. Um, this might be uh, help you troubleshoot um, if when you get to the slot request you don't find some of your sessions this is one of the things you can check and make sure it's set to yes all right, so adding that calendar year and adding that student batch. So we're gonna go to configuration. Within the school configuration, you'll find both items here. And for the uh, student batch, this is what that looks like. It'll show you all of your class labels. You'll click on add new. That will ask you for your uh, batch label class of 2025, DO7, whatever you like to call your classes. And then you'll just provide some additional information such as when do they come in? When are they graduating? And that's all you need to do to to add that folder. When you're configuring your calendar year, you'll click on add new, you'll simply select the year from the dropdown and that will add it to your, um, oh, let's see. Okay, I have two people saying I'm cutting out and I do have a question here. If the session is inactive, will it default to not send in the slot request? Um, you have to select the session from the slot request and you'll see that in a second. Um, so it will not send it if it's not selected, no. Um, but if it's inactive, it may not show up on the slot request. Beck, are you able to hear me? I don't know if you were able to join in as a presenter. I'm getting some comments about um, Mike connectivity or connection not being too great. So I wanna make sure that we have good audio. 
Okay. Your sound is just fine. Okay. People may want to check their own connection. Thank you, Christina. Um, I think there is a number uh, that you are able to call if you are having some, um, if I sound spotty to you, it sounds like other people are um, able to hear me just fine. Um, I am sick as well, so I do apologize if I sound nasally, that might be another thing, but feel free to try the phone number or maybe just jump off and then log back on, that might help as well. Okay, so back on these, um, that's how you add both the student batch and the calendar year. So moving on to the next thing is uh, preparing for your slot request. So we, we also want to verify um, and make sure that each of your clinical sites has at least one staff member set to receive your mailing. Um, and this really only applies to any of the active sites that you will reach out to. So if you have uh, sites that you don't plan on um, sending your mailing to, you don't have to worry about those. Uh, but to verify or look at that data, you'll want to go to reports, other reports, and then you'll go into the slot request staff report. And that report looks a bit like this. Um, you'll see that there is going to be some site information, and then you'll have this column, site staff receiving the slot request. This is a column you want to focus on and make sure there's at least one person listed. And then you'll have site staff not receiving the slot request. This indicates that they are associated with the site, but they are not set to receive the mailing. If you need to make any adjustments to the staff section, you'll click on this edit pencil. It'll redirect you to the um, site's profile uh, within the staff section, and then you're able to make some changes. Um, some good filters for this report that you might wanna look into, you'll be able to look at the filters by opening up the advanced search. Those filters are going to be these three. There are certainly other filters as well that might be helpful to you, but these are kind of the ones that we like to call out. You'll have your active sites filter. The report will filter to showing you only active sites, but if you wanna take a look at some of your inactive sites to see if um, uh, your relationship with them has changed, you've renewed the contract, so you wanna send them the mailing, you can always change that to no run the report, look at that list, make sure it's still you know, the case that they're inactive or you might wanna make some changes. Include site in the slot request. Uh, this is also set to yes, but you can always change it to no, just to see if you have any particular sites you have opted on not sending out the mailing to them. If you wanna make sure that is still accurate, you can always filter for those no's and then update um, any changes that are needed. The site staff verification is one of my favorite filters here, just because um, rather than scrolling through the entire report to see who um, has a contact person, selecting the con no contacts listed option allows you to filter for only those sites that are active, included in the slot request, but do not have a contact listed. So that's a really nice way of just looking at what you need to you know, add on and then review the rest of your data that way. So I'm going to jump into the system just to show you that really quickly here, and then we'll take a look at the rest of the presentation. So one second here, I'm gonna go ahead and log in. Okay, and I am now in the system. And to access your report, you're going to go over to reports, other reports. And we're gonna go over in the site reports box to the slot request staff report section. All right. And this is what the report looks like. You'll see that the report is filtered automatically by active sites and those that are included in the slot request. And once I open up the advanced search box, those filters will be visible to me here. If I go ahead and scroll through the report, um, anybody that doesn't have someone set to receive the mailing in this particular column here, the entire row will appear in a yellow color and will let me know that no site contacts have been added. So you're able to see that kind of quickly by looking at that. And if I wanted to add someone, I'll click on that edit pencil icon. It'll redirect me to the site staff section and I can then assign a staff member by clicking on this, selecting whether it's uh, someone that's already in my database or someone that is brand new. If I go back to the report here, 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the filter for the site staff verification. I'll go ahead and select no contacts listed and then run the search. And then only those sites that don't uh, that do not have someone set to receive my mailing will appear. So this kind of helps you uh, shorten that list of data you have to review. Cool. All right. Any questions on the report before I go ahead and move on? All right. Okay. So moving on, um, as you look at your site data, uh, there may be some sites that you want to make sure they're included or that you remove them from the mailing if that's the case. Uh, you'll want to go to clinical sites, search sites, you'll find and select your site, and then you'll go into the edit information section and other configurations. And within this box here, you'll want to make sure that this question here, include the site during the slot request, is set to either yes if you want them included or no if you don't want them to be included. So regardless of whether you have a staff member uh, at that site who is set to receive it, if this question is set to no, the site will not receive a mailing. Um, so you want to make sure that is set to yes. Um, that is the case for most of your sites unless you have gone in and updated that yourself. Um, so you can take a look at that um, for your sites. If um, there are any specific site staff people that you would like to include or remove, let's say that as you're looking at that report, someone is set to not receive the mailing, but you know you want to change that. Uh, once you get to the site staff page, you'll want to click on this pencil icon. It'll show you that person's designation. And this question here, include staff in annual slot request email, you'll want to make sure that is set to yes. You can also see that when you're looking at the site staff page, there's going to be this icon here with the three connected dots. As long as that is color-coded, it means that is set to yes. If it is grayed out, it means that they are not set to receive those slot request emails. All right. Hey, Rocio. Hello, Beck. Hey, I'm sorry. I, I was having a really hard time getting in, um, so I can take it from here if you'd like. Um, yeah. Do you want to maybe continue with the slides, though, since you already have them up, or do you want me to open up my slides? Say that one more time. Do you want to keep your slides up or do you want me to open up the ones that I have? Oh, if you can go ahead and open up the ones you have um, just so that I can monitor the questions. I think we've had a few trickle in, so. Um, okay. That sounds good. Yeah. And everybody, I'm really sorry. I had some huge issues getting in today, so I appreciate your patience with us. And I um, hope that everything will go a little smoother now um, that Rocio's not just on her own here. Um, so let me share my screen and um, I'm going to need to change the presenter to myself. There it is. Okay. Show my screen. All right. Can everybody see my screen or Rocio, can you confirm that my screen is showing? Yes, I can see your screen. And hopefully, okay. um, Beck has better audio as well, since I know a lot of you are having some issues with hearing my voice. So that mm -hmm. might also help. Hopefully, yes. Okay, so where were you slide-wise? I was going right up to slide 11. We were just about to start the configuration. Okay, perfect. All right, and then does anybody have any questions before we start the configuration section, which is really we're gonna go, when we're gonna go into exact and um, do it kind of in a live, um, do it live basically. So there's a question maybe in the box. It doesn't sound like, I, or it doesn't look like I have any questions. Oh, it's just the sound. Yes, yeah, the sound yeah. question. Okay, no big deal. Okay. Um, so what we're going to go into now is just configuring the slot request. Um, and uh, we're just going to dive right into doing it. So if you, um, if you have your system open, go ahead and um, you know maybe just uh, minimize your slideshow. And uh, and I, and if you don't have it open, let's give you. I'm, we're going to give you a minute to just log in. So um, I'm going to give you a you know just a couple seconds here to 
to log into your system and I'm going to go ahead and pull up um, Exat right now and I'll be sharing my screen with that in a second. <clears throat> Again, we appreciate your patience with this. I'm really sorry about my uh, technical difficulties today, which are numerous. So <laughs> I don't know. I'm in technology, but having tech issues um, is not my favorite. Does anybody need any more time um, getting logged in? Is everybody okay? If you, if, you, if you need more time, raise your hand. Otherwise, we're going to assume that you're in an okay place. Um, and that you're ready to go through the configuration with us as or with me as I um as I go through it. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and um just start sharing my screen. So uh if you um if you just logged in, you're gonna um probably come into the dashboard, but I'm assuming that you know how to get to the slot request screen, which is down here. Um, if you don't, though, it's it's on your it's on your left menu. If you click slot request, it takes you to this screen. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a new slot request. And we have two options here. If you're uh, if you're new to the slot request process, you're going to create a new slot request. If you have done it before and you want to go ahead and copy an existing slot request, you can do that instead. Um, I'm going to create a new one, assuming that some people don't have it yet. Um, uh, who haven't, are, this is their first time, and uh, going to go that way through it. Okay, so you're going to get to this page, and you're going to need to give it a title. So I'm going to go go ahead and call it the uh, March Mailing for 2023. Uh, this is an internal title. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, anything that you're going to have your site see. In fact, if you have several different uh, setups or configurations, you're probably going to have different titles for each one. So please, you know, feel feel free to be um, as creative as you need to be in order to keep these, in, you know, um, organized for yourself. Uh, the basic configuration options that you see here are um, are really important to pay attention to. There are a couple of new options this year, so I'm going to point those out. Um, if you are a PT or OT program, you're going to go ahead and select PT OT. You might not be receiving at seeing any other options anyway, but if, if you do, make sure that that is the one you, you select, PTO. Um, and then uh, set, set confirmed slots to active means that the, the slots that are, when, when, your, when your sites confirm the slots, they're going to come in as active slots, which is what you probably want, which is why it's turned on and automatically uh, by default. Uh, allow sites to offer first come, first serve slots. Um, which is what FCFS stands for. Uh, if you want your sites to be able to do that, go ahead and say yes to that. Um, and then do you want your sites to offer slots for new locations that are for, at first come first serve that wasn't previously available? Um, if you want them to be able to do that, you're gonna wanna go ahead and say yes to that too. Some people like to write a little bit of uh, instructions to sites. They'll see this on the on the slot page. So you can maybe say something like uh, first come, FCFS means first come first serve if you want them to know that. Or, or any other sort of thing um, that you want them to say. This this is auto-generated text because we've typed it before, but you can literally write anything you want in here and uh, your sites will see that when they look at the first come first serve. Uh, the, the, one of the newer features this year is allowing sites to offer interview required slots. So if you want that to be uh, available for your sites, go ahead and turn that to yes. And uh, again, the same questions for the first come first serve and all that stuff. You're going to be able to um, enable it for new locations and also um, put any sort of text in here for um, the interview process. So, um, you know, please mention uh, due dates or, or something along those lines, so that when you, you know, we, when when they do give you an interview card slot. You would you know that there's a date that, that those uh, inter that those interviews are going to be due by. Um, then you have these other two options here that are um, not new, uh, but you can either send the request to a designated group of sites. Um, this is if you are going to break up your mailing into different groups, or if for uh, for any reason you think you need to, um, you know, to just exclude certain type sites or or target the sites. So when you're um, working with a designated group of sites. You're usually going to have um, something in the drop down here uh, that that are your site categories. 
set categories like um, this site is for CE1 requests or this site is for the Midwest region. Um, those categories can help you uh, target those sites if you want to. Um, if you don't use this yet, then don't worry about it. You know, you, you're, the blanket um, March 1st mailing is, is perfect for, the, for, you know, for most people. But every now and then somebody needs to configure just for a certain group. And uh, that's something that we can, we can help you with if you, if you want. If you want to set a due date for site responses, you're going to say yes. And in this case, um, remember, this is not a, the date that they, they the, the link doesn't expire at this point. It's just, a, it's just a visual reminder that you would like to hear from them by a certain date and time, or a certain date not and time, just a certain date. Um, and uh, whatever the, des the designated date is for you all, you can choose that. Um, otherwise, you can put any date you want in there. Um, but this is, the, uh, this is where you'll put that and that your sites will see this. OK. Um, display the batch or class name to the site on the slot request page. This is going to allow the, uh, the site to see which class of students it is um, for. Uh, if you have a lot of different batches, that might, that might be confusing for them. Or if, it's, if you've named the, um, the session with the batch name, so uh, you, know, you know what I mean by that. So if you're basically calling it like CE1 class of 2022, then that would be repetitive because class of 2022 is the batch name too. So you, you might want to just say no to that if, if you're using a longer batch name. Um, but yes, if, if you think it would be helpful for your sites. You have the option here to select the setting to be shown to the site. And um, in this case, you can do session sequence settings. These are basically based on uh, if you set up your sessions to say, you know, this is an outpatient uh, ortho um, setting, uh, outpatient ortho uh, session. You could, um, you would be able to 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 only they, the sites would only see those outpatient ortho um, slots. They won't see anything else. So that's helpful if you really want to make sure you don't get something you don't want. Site settings would allow the, the sites only to see settings that you have designated as their settings. If you're relatively new to to uh, Exad and you, you haven't really done that yet uh, with your sites, um, that's okay. Don't worry. It's it's. Uh, you can you can do it later if you want to, but the site settings would would basically only show them the ones that that they have. You can also create a custom list. So if so, you know sometimes you might you might have a lot of stuff in here, or you might have some uh, settings that are for really internal purposes only. Like maybe you have a certain kind of ice experience that you don't that you know, or a, or a professional development course that you don't want your um, your uh, sites to see. If that's the case, you can certainly. Um, only select the ones that you want. And then that's all the sites are going to see. They're not going to see anything else. And uh, you can also customize the responses that your sites see. Um, you know, the, the basic responses are, you know, offer slot, uh, no, no offered slot, and maybe later. If you want to do that, you can go ahead and change the text by clicking in here um, and then changing the text. All right, so that's the first step. And of course, uh, you know we've got the we we talked about these slot request preferences last week, but go I have to fill it out anyway, so I'll just walk through it kind of quickly. Um, if you want the support team to to send your slot request, you can uh, do this by going in and selecting the date and time that you want them to do it. So it's pretty easy to do that. And um, if you're going to schedule it on your own, you'll just click here. So I'm going to do that right now. Um, do I want the when do I want the slot request link to expire? This is a required field, um, and you're going to want to go ahead and just put in the, the date that you want it to expire. Um, I'm actually going to do it for 2023 and the last day of 2020, of the of February 2023. Uh, some people go less time, some people go more time. It, it's, a, it's completely up to you. Um, and I'm going to answer no to this question for now, since we talked about update set information last time. Um, and I'm just going to fill this out super quick. And we're going to move up to the next step. So I'm going to click Save and Next. Um, and it's going to take me to the session selection page. <clears throat> uh, we'll see, just... I'll talk to you about. Yeah, oh. go ahead. 
<laughs> Sorry, I was just going to add on. On that slot request preference form, uh, when you're filling it out, you may notice that um, you cannot select two business days out. So if you were looking at it today, you wouldn't be able to select the dates of the, um, what day is it today? Let me look at my calendar here. It's the 12th. So the 12th. you couldn't select the 13th. Or the 14th. Or the 14th. Yeah, we also have a limitation for weekends. So the first day you'd be able to select would be the 17th on your calendar if you were booking it today for the 17th. Um, so just keep that in mind as you're filling out that preference form. Um, the later you wait, uh, the less time you'll have to to you know uh, set out your mailing in the future. If you're trying to set up your preference form, you know very close to March 1st, uh, that may be something that doesn't let you select the time frame that you ideally may want. Just because this form does generate a support ticket on our end so that we can keep track of everyone we'll be supporting. Um, we want to make sure that we don't miss your request. So the sooner you fill that out, the better for our team. Yeah. Thanks for that, um, Rocio. That's a very important point. Um, and then I think you already said this, but it's that that preferences form is due by the 24th of January so that our team can get started on everything. Yes. Um, it doesn't mean you have to have everything configured for the slot request. You just have to have that one part of the form filled out. So that's it's not a not a huge deal, but uh, it is something that we need to so we can yeah. plan for who's going to be using the slot request this year. And Beck, um, do you mind going back to the basic configuration section really quick? Someone is asking where is the preference form? Oh sure, yeah. So the basic configuration is at the top of the page, and the preference form is right here underneath it. If I had left anything out that was required, it wouldn't let me go anywhere. Um, and then what Rosia was saying was selecting the date for the slot request to go out. If I selected, um, if I tried to select tomorrow, it wouldn't let me because it's grayed out because it's uh, I, I'm not unable I'm not unable to send it um, until actually Monday at this point because um, the thirteenth and the fourteenth are business days, but they're two business days, and then the weekend is, is it's not able to be sent on the weekend. Um, unless of course March first happened on a weekend, but it, it doesn't this year, so. Um, and then if we, uh, you know, they, uh, the first day I could I could actually select would be the 17th. Does that help uh, uh, to answer the question? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, so I'm going to go back over to here and just uh, save and next, even though I didn't really make any changes. And it takes me to the session selection page. This is where I'm going to be able to select the sessions that I just had set up before um, for 2023. Now I'm only seeing one, one session here. It's just because it's a demo and um, you probably will see a lot more here. Uh, you'll be able to search for, you know, any of the text that you see below. So if you want to, if you want to search for maybe a calendar year or a, a class of, you can do that. Um, if you have a lot of sessions that show up here, I'm just going to select this one and move on to the next step. Uh, if you cloned, what you'll do, what, what's going to happen is you're going to see the ones that you selected last year. You'll have to deselect those before you select your new ones, or before you go, or before you're finished. You can you can select the new ones first if you want, but you will you'll you'll have to deselect the old ones if if you um don't want them to show on the slot request. Uh, you might see an, a message from the system that says uh, there are placements or slots for these um, for these sessions. Just ignore that. Um, and just say okay. I think there's like an okay button, and then move on. It's it's just to let you know that that there are slots there. I'm going to go ahead and click on save then next, and it's going to take us to the next step in the process, which is all the different emails that we have available through the email configuration um, page. Now we looked at some of this last time with the update site information, but there's actually a lot more available than than that. So I'm going to go through each of these. You can see what they are. Um, and you're going to want to, um, in every case, just customize the messages that are going from you to the sites. So I'm just going to open this one up and um, change the. You can change the subject. Um, <clears throat> you, since we in the slot request preferences said no, uh, that's why this says no. If you say yes to this question, which you might have, um, it's going to actually show the date of when it's when when you uh, selected it. So it's kind of a good like visual reminder that you know that of when of when you selected them to do it. It's very helpful. Um, if you want to see see somebody on the slot request, uh, which I wouldn't recommend, but sometimes people want to, um, then you would just need to put that person's email address in here, 
and uh, use a semicolon between each email address. So if you're if you're going to CC more than one person, um, you could you could do that. It's but it's going to um, it's going to send a copy of the slot request that you're sending out to every, to that person for every single person you're sending it to. So if you have a thousand sites, you're gonna you might get a thousand emails, or whoever gets that email will get a, you know that number of emails. You also have the ability to, to BCC somebody. Um, that means just that the site wouldn't see the who that who was being CC'd. Um, one other point I'll make here is that you'll put a semicolon between the email addresses, but no space. So uh, it, it, you'll get an error message if you try to move on with a space between. It'll say that the email is invalid. So um, want to make sure that there's no space either before or after the email address, and uh, and and that will be uh, that. Will, then you'll be able to proceed with as many emails addresses that you need as you need. Uh, the reply to email address here is uh, you can do multiple. Like every most most of, most of the emails from Exat are you can only have one reply to. But for this particular email, you can have as many as you want. Um, so again, you would separate those um, with a uh, oops, semicolon here. Um, and I'll show you what happens if you put a space here. Um, it's going to say this, please enter a valid email address. Um, uh, To get rid of that message, uh, you can just go ahead and go back here um, and take that space out, and you won't see the problem anymore. Um, and if you're like me and you do put a space after everything, you'll see that same problem. Just go ahead and delete that; you'll be fine. The next fun part is the actual message. So this is the email that you know you might be working to send out, and um, you can make it as personal or you know as much as you want to say about it. Um, you can you can certainly make it personal. You could also make it short and sweet. Um, I wouldn't recommend deleting the, the link that I like I just did, but uh, but you could if you if you do delete the link, uh, your best option is to just uh, close it and um, and then it'll everything will be back there again. So which is what I'm gonna do in this case. Um, questions about that part? Uh, well, I, I think we're gonna actually just keep moving. So. Unless there's a really urgent question right now, or Rocio. Nope. You can see a hand raised as well. On. Okay. All right. Perfect. All right. Um, so the next part, we can see uh, we already talked about update site information last week. So we're going to really just focus on the next ones here. Um, and we'll just talk really briefly about what each of these emails does and why they're important. Um, so the slot request confirmation email is a, or slot confirmation email is an email that goes out to your sites. And it allows it what it what it does is it allows you to remind them that uh, that they didn't confirm their slots. So when they don't confirm their slots, um, that means that the uh, they don't become active slots in your system, and that's not what you want. Um, so you're going to want to go ahead and come in and, and and have them reminded that they need to do it. Now the way that um, what happens with this is it actually reminds them either um, after one day after one week or after a month and they just get one reminder email so it's uh it's sort of uh strategic how you might want to do that um but think of this email sort of as the um shopping cart you know reminder if you have something in your cart and you don't check out um and that's what this that's what this email is like so it, it basically is it just reminds the site that they started it and oops there's something you didn't finish um and uh and and, and then that's what it does um, so you do have to select one of these three, um, and then if you select after a week, you're going to want to select the day of the week. Um, there's all kinds of people who say that uh, Tuesdays are the best days to get emails. Uh, depends on really what that person's life is like, so you can completely decide what day you want to do that on. Um, and after a month, you're going to you you would actually be selecting the day of the month uh, that it would be on. So it's a little bit easier to do. I think a week because your your sites are you know it, it's you, you kind of know when they're going to get it. Um, if you want to be CC'd on that email, you can be. Uh, otherwise, you can just leave it blank, and um, then you then you won't necessarily get that in, in your in your you won't get it in your mailbox if you um, if you're not like wanting to see that email. You will be able to pull a report for all the sites who didn't uh, confirm their slots, so it, it's not necessary um, necessarily necessary to receive that email. But if you wanted to, you could. 
Um, probably my favorite email is the slot acknowledgement from the site. Uh, what this is going to do is it actually sends an email to the site that uh, lets them know <clears throat> that you know this is what you have offered us, and um, it's it's a summary of the slots that that they offered um, to, uh, for that year. So. Um, the uh, it's giving it'll give those those either the, or offered or didn't offer like however they responded they're going to receive response summary and if there are some slot details they'll see slot details too so let's see each of the sites or locations that they have and then your um and how whatever they offered in those in those spots um and this is a great email uh to cc yourself on because then you also get uh, a copy of the um of the the email that they got, and then you can store it somewhere if you want to, um, or if they lose track of it, you can forward it. Although we do have other ways of getting it to them um, if you needed to send it again, if they lost it or they you know they needed to have another copy of it. Uh, so that's my recommendation is to definitely CC yourself though. That way you can kind of be happy that to see that the slot's going in um, to the system. I'm not checking these as I go down the list because. Um, Every time you open a new email to configure it, uh, it it won't save the check mark until you actually click save. Um, so that's why I'm not doing that right now, but I will be doing that in a minute here. Um, so contact site later for slots notification to schools is an automatic reminder that that goes to you or whoever you know you want it to go to in your um, university that uh, that your site said, "Hey, call me later," um, and now is later. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just put mine in here too again. For this email, you must you have to put somebody in. Uh, you have to put whoever the school staff is that will that you want to receive the reminder email. And it really just does it just really sends an email reminding you, hey, you know these people wanted this um, reminder or wanted to to be contacted again at this time, and you know tomorrow. Is that is the day, and uh, it's just a great way to kind of keep track of stuff. You will also be able to see that in the report, but the, the nice thing is that you know you get the email reminder as well. If you choose to, you could also just have a exact send a reminder email to the site um, instead of reminding you first. Uh, it will you can still remind yourself first that it's going to happen, but uh, if you want exact to send out that reminder email. Uh, it automatically sends that email to your sites on whatever day they said. So if they say, please contact me on July 1st, they'll get a, an email of this sort on July 1st. So it'll say, you know, we appreciate your support. Um, and then um, here's the link of the, you know, to, to the email that, uh, you know, to, to basically finish your, to offer the slots. Um, and then they'll be able to go ahead and, and, and offer slots for that particular, um, uh, you know, for you basically. So um, they'll see their list of sites here, the link here. You can see, see yourself on that email if you want. It is just an automated, um, uh, it's triggered, it's automated email triggered by the date that the site has put in. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and select these uh, emails because I wanna move on to the next page and I wanna make sure I select them. Uh, it, you're gonna get this uh, warning that it's, you know, confirm that, that you want the system to send out an automated message requesting slots on the date specified by the site. Um, it's just a reminder that that's what that, that's what's happening on that at that time. You, if you say yes, um, you know it'll it'll go ahead and let you move on. Um, if you say no, it, you'll have to uncheck it and and, and uh, before you can move on. So I'm going to go ahead and click on save and next. It's going to save the emails. Any changes I made to the emails are, were already saved when I when I went there, but also it's going to save anything that I um you know that I that I selected. This next page is is showing us how we can uh, customize the page that our sites will see. So I'm going to go ahead and um, go through this part here too. So we've got uh you know the the option of letting your sites update their site information through the, the slot request. And if you wanted that, um, you would say yes. <clears throat> and it's gonna show you the parts of this that you want them to be able to update. So um, you know, we wanna go through this list. You can just say, well, you want, I want them to update these things. Um, and I want them to update staff email addresses, but not and phone numbers, but not fax numbers. But anything you wanted to select here is fine. 
Um, the next section, um, it is optional, but it's I think a really nice uh, um, a really nice option where you can actually have your sites do um, uh, say, see who it is that they're working with, basically. So the contact information is your contact information. Uh, and you can actually even upload a photo. Um, or if you're not comfortable with a photo, your university logo can go here too. Um, otherwise, what, what is going to show is this image of this graduating um, person. So um, kind of keep that in mind. If you, if you don't want that, um, maybe just uh, use a, a logo or something like that. Uh, and you, you, know, you, can, you can also put, you know, your title here too. So you can say, you know, uh, your name and title so that they know exactly who it is that they're looking at. You can have multiple contact people here. So I only have one here, but I could add, I could add as many as I wanted to. If you have a, like a large team, then um, you might want to add, you know, everybody from that team or just add the, like the, the main players of Brooklyn Ed. The next section is a section where you can add a document or any sort of attachment um, that, uh, that your sites might want to be able to have access to. And this shows up um, in, on the landing page for, this, for the site. So in order to add a document, you just click Add Document. And then you could maybe call it like your paper slot request. You can describe it. Um, And then you can just go ahead and upload that document here. <clears throat> Might not let me upload a PowerPoint, probably won't. But anyway, so that you'll, you'll want to go ahead and put any any sort of document there, uh, but not a not a PowerPoint because that's probably too big. Um, but a Word document or something like that that they can use to then, um, or a PDF that they can use to then fill out um, or have as a reference. Some people do clinic benefits or. Um, you know, they put in their clinic handbook here too. So that's where that would go. Um, the next section is uh, an optional message. This optional message shows up on the top of the page for the site. Um, and it's, it's basically any message that, that you want them to say, to see you. So, um, you know, thanks for being there. And, uh, you know, you can also describe any, any change, any curriculum changes you might have um, or any, any special needs you might have for your students. The additional information, um, which is also optional, shows up on the bottom right-hand side of the page next to your schedule of classes or your, your, your uh, course schedule um, of sessions. So uh, what some people do here is maybe, um, you know, say we, we use outpatient ortho for uh, CP3, um, or whatever you want to talk about there in terms of greatest need. <clears throat> you can also, like I said, it's optional, so you can leave it blank. If it's blank, it's, it doesn't just say, you know, it just, it just does not, it's just white space if it's, if it's blank. So it's not a big deal. Um, and then you can see there's page instructions that you can edit. Um, I'm not going to do that right now, but if you needed help with, 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 ed, ed, with, with editing page instructions, all you have to do is um, go ahead and click Add New, and then all the other page instructions that were previously there will go away, and you can actually add your own um, your own page instructions here. Um, and then you can choose, you know, the color, where it shows up, top, bottom, or both, top and bottom, and then which um, which page it shows up on. So either the landing page or the confirm page. The confirm page is the, is this is the page the site sees when they um, click on submit or confirm or confirm and submit. And then, uh, you know, that's, that's the page they'll see there. I'm just gonna delete it because I don't want to that right now. Okay, and I'm gonna go over to the last page here and this is the review and confirm page for you. Um, and it's uh, basically a way to see, you know, what did I set up? What am I asking for? What are um, what are the preferences that I that I set up for the slot request? Um, which sessions did I include? So each of these different uh, sections allows you to, to review that information. Um, it also shows you which emails you you asked for, so you can make sure when you get to this point that you did select the ones that you want. 
and then the other configuration page. This is showing you all the information that you know you, that you're sharing with your sites on the site landing page, um, as as well as your page instructions. When you click confirm, it's going to ask you, do you want to confirm the slot request configuration? If you're still working on it, just say um, just say okay and and keep it on no. If you are completely done and you're like you know good to go, um, you can say yes, and then you would say okay. I'm going to keep it at no, so I'm not really done. And um, once you click on that, it takes you back to the you know, to your slot request landing page, and it's going to automatically put it um, at the bottom. So that's what we're seeing here, um, March mailing 2023. <clears throat> Any questions at this point? Is there anything that somebody wants to see again? I did go through and answer most of the questions we got. Um, I did want to highlight one thing though um, that's in the slides and I don't think that this particular system has back. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Oh no, you're fine. It's it's just that um, it's not enabled for everybody, but I think it's something good to call out in case people want to have this enabled. Um, on the presentation, it will be on slide 23. Um, so, Beck, I don't know if you want to pull that up. It's part of the configuration process. So I just kind of want to call that out while we wait for anyone who has questions to add those on. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just doing that. Can you see my my screen with the slot with oops? No. Wrong. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, okay. You have to switch the um switch the display. You're, we're seeing the presentation. When you go into presentation mode, we see the the other view. I know. I don't know why I wasn't doing that before. Um, okay. Well, I'm just going to go to 23 right now. Yeah, I'll just make it. And I think for you, it's slide 22. I'm, I'm not sure if you have the... Yeah. Um, so on this slide here, you'll see uh, the email configuration, and this is not enabled for uh, most of you, I would imagine, um, but it is something that you can request to have enabled. So right below the reply to email address, there is a field on this particular screenshot that says email sender's name. And what that does is that you can go ahead and type in your name, anybody that you'd like. Um, if you kind of hover over to the right, you'll see what that uh will do is that when the email goes out to your clinical site, um, where it says the from, it'll actually show the name that you added to that email sender's name field. So I went ahead and added James Spader just to test this. Mm -hmm. um, so instead of it saying exact, it'll actually say your name if you add that on there. Um, so that is something that I know a lot of our clients want to make sure that these emails are personal, that it may um, entice our, uh, your clinical sites to actually open up your email so you are able to add your name to that field. Field. Um, if that is something you're interested in doing, um, contact support and just let them know um, and say, hey, can you please add this field to my configuration? And if you hover back to the template, it, it'll say email sender's name. So you want to ask for that particular uh, field to be added and that way your email notification can say it came from you. The sender will still obviously be us, but at least it'll appear that it's from you rather than exact. And I did have a few yeah, questions. It would, yeah, it would appear as like the university name though right now. Like if you don't change the name, it's going to say like um, whatever your university, like exact university um, PT program or something. So whatever it, it already says, it's going to say that. But if you want it to say something different, then you can change it to a this person, right? Yes. And so um, if you do want to have that enabled, I know someone just said to repeat that, you'll just want to contact support and ask and say, hey, can you please add the email sender's name to my slot request configuration? Um, you can even send them a screenshot of this um, so they kind of know what you're referring to, um, but that you just want to make sure you, you mention email sender's name in your support request. I do have another question here. The due date for the slot request configuration is, I believe we had said, um, the time for you guys to wrap up your configuration entirely is going to be February 16. 
Um, so that is um, the kind of deadline um, for everyone. We will be sending out reminders to everyone, um, but try to get that done before the February 16th date, uh, just because our team will go ahead and start to review your configurations, make sure um, who will be supporting and sending out emails on their behalf. Uh, so that's the time frame for the um, due date of your entire configuration. Sounds good. Um, is, uh, and that was the only question right now so far. Yes, we have Network. another one. Okay. Yeah. We have another question. How do we request that line be added? Again, you can contact support. Um, and Beck, if you don't mind going into the system really quick for me, just to kind of show them how to put that support request in. You, of course, always have two options. You can email support at exact.com or you can do that right within your system. There is a support page that you can access by going over, yeah, I think you can click on the person there. It'll mm -hmm. take you to a support form that you can fill out. And so we'll kind of just demo that for everyone here if you'd like to have that added. Um, so you'll enter in your subject line on that form to the right of it. <laughs> Please add. And I think it's called email senders. Uh, let me go look at that really quick. Email sender's name. Oh. <laughs> my, my cat just walked on my keyboard, sorry. Um, please add the email sender's name feature or option or whatever you want to call it to slot request. emails. Uh, you can change the priority if you want to, and then go ahead and just write, uh, you yeah, know, we saw, saw this feature in the webinar. On, you know, uh, 112 would like it. enabled. And uh, you can, if you do have a screenshot, you can add that screenshot, you know, in here too, um, with where it says upload attachments. Um, and then you can just click on submit, and then it would, all, it would uh, send the ticket to the system um, for that. And then you can keep track of those tickets, either it, 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 below with, with, with your open tickets, um, or your resolved tickets. Any questions about that? doesn't look like it. I do have another question that says, how can you find out how the slot request email currently shows as our program as email sender? Um, so if you would like to um, view just what your email will look like in someone's inbox, you can send out a test uh, email to yourself. Uh, that is something you can do if um, you're not able to do that or you're not comfortable doing that within the system, you are able uh, to request support to send you a sample email as well. Um, so that's another right. thing that you can do. Yeah, especially if support is, is, is actually sending your emails for you, they, they'll, they'll, they'll reach out probably and ask you if you want to have it sent, but you can also just say preemptively that you'd like to have it sent to, your, that you, to you. Um, if you want, but if you do want to send it your, to yourself, do you want me to show that to them really quick, Rosalie? Uh, sure. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to um, click on the schedule notification. So this is back on the slot request landing page. Um, and if I click schedule notification, <clears throat> it's going to show me that I have a slot request email that I can send out. Um, so I'm going to click schedule notification right here. And it's going to show me my list of people. I don't want to send it. To, I don't want to send, you know, the whole list to myself. I just want to select one, um, maybe two, if you, if you want to see what different what the different landing pages look like. And then you'll click schedule request. The next step is important because this is where you're going to, you're going to need to override the recipient's email um, and send it directly to yourself um, instead. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here.
and um, everything else is, you know, you can kind of just leave it as it is because you're sending it to yourself. Um, but the um, the important thing to do is 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 if, is if you've asked support to send it, it's automatically going to have a date that's in here. You'll need to delete that date and have it be blank, and then um, send it to yourself, and then it will go to it will go to you. So double check that it says that, and then just click on next. This is not your um, point of no return, though. Um, you could certainly stop the process if you're not sure that you sent it to yourself at this point. Um, it it will uh it will let you go you know delete basically stop the process at this point too. Um, but I can go ahead and just click on send. It says, "Are you sure?" Say yes, and then it's going to go ahead and send that email. If at any point in this process you you know right now I could I could I could stop it from going if I again if I had second thoughts. Um, I could just click on stop processing and it would not send it to me um, or anybody. Um, don't don't let the fact that it has this person's here, this person's name here um, concern you. It's, it is going to say that because that is who it was meant for, but you overrode the recipient's email and so it did not go to that person. Uh, you can be sure of that by going to no notification history. And then you can see, uh, you know, who you've sent it out to um, recently or, or in the past. Might take a couple seconds for this to load. Sorry, it's only because there's probably a lot of emails that have been sent from the system. Uh, the most recent email will be always on the top, um, and you can just click View. And it's going to show you the email um, and who it went to. Obviously, if you if you received the email, you know that it went to you also. Um, but if you if you haven't had a chance to do that, and you just want to look here. Um, you can actually see who the email went to. So this email ID is showing us that regardless of you know who it was it was meant for, who it went to is right here when it was sent. Um, to view the email itself, you click view, and it shows you the email that you sent out. Um, and then you can even um, even click on the link if you want to see if the link is working the way you know the way that you meant for it to. <clears throat> or I mean, I guess I guess you can click on the link, but I what I, what I would recommend instead of clicking on the link, actually, is if you are viewing this email, you want to see what is my site going to see. Um, I would say instead of clicking on the email, open it up into an incognito window. Um, so if you um, if you right click, you're going to get these options here. And you can say, okay, well, I want to open this link into an incognito window, and that allows you to see um, see it without logging out of Exat. Because uh, if you click the link um, and you're logged into Exat, it's going to automatically log log you out because it thinks that you are, um, you know, Danny Al Albolas um, or Abolas. So uh, this is this is the landing page I was talking about. We can see that. Um, this is this is what the contact information looks like. I, I do look like a graduating icon. Um, the resources are here. Uh, so that's that uploaded document that I put in. Um, but I, I put in something that was invalid. So that's why it's giving me that. Um, you can, I can always go back and delete that. Here's the message from the school that shows up on the top of that page. And then um, the additional information uh, shows up over here. I know I kind of answered that a little bit too long, but any questions about that? Not seeing any other questions back. I have already answered everyone else. Yeah, you're fast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, let's uh, go back to the PowerPoint, see if I can actually do that right this time. Wow, guys, sorry. There we go. Cool. All right, so we talked about this part already. All right, so once you have, um, once you have done the, the slot request configuration, you have some additional options. So you can, you know, you can see how the site saw it. Now I, I showed you how the site could see it by actually going to the email that I sent to myself. 
Um, but you can also see it uh, through the site view, which is a little bit easier than, than sending yourself the email and clicking on the link. Um, you can continue to edit the email, um, or you can schedule a notification, which I showed you how to do, or you can look at the analyze. So this is going to show you how many emails went out, how many bounced, um, and that sort of thing. Okay, we did schedule the email. Does anybody have any questions about scheduling emails? Oh, actually, let me uh, highlight this, this, this part right here because we didn't really talk about this. Um, you're gonna get to this page where you can see, like, like I was showing you how to send it to yourself. This is showing you how to send it to all these people too. And um, you're gonna see that you're only gonna be able to see the first 50, um, but you can send it to more than 50 if you want to. You'll just need to say uh, show and then change it to all. And then it will show your entire list. Um, and then you'll use the drop down here to select all. Um, and then and then you can send it to everybody. Um, you'll click on the schedule request and it takes you to this page that we were looking at in the system where you can put in the schedule email or if you leave it blank, it will send immediately. Um, so make sure that you do that. Make sure you check the year too. Uh, sometimes it's, you know, if people are in a rush, I've seen it go um, where people um, actually put it up a date in the past um, and then it will, uh, it'll send it automatically then too. Um, I'm not sure if, it, if it's still possible to do that, but just in case, uh, just really pay attention to the date that you've selected. Um, you can also make any last minute changes to this. Uh, like let's say for, you know, maybe a, a certain group of people, you're gonna send a, a slightly different email. Well, you can make changes to that here too. So you can make changes to the CC, the BCC, the email itself, any attachments that you wanna attach. Um, we could have done that when you were setting it up, but you can also change it here. You'll click next. And then it takes you to the part where it's gonna be uploading all those documents. Um, once it uploads them all, you're gonna, it's gonna ask you if you're sure you wanna send or schedule those, and then you're gonna say yes, and it will either send them right away or schedule them. Uh, if you say no, it, it won't, obviously. It'll, it'll go back to the previous page after that. Um, once those emails have been scheduled, it's gonna say email's been scheduled for 3-1-2022 at 8 a.m. Um, with, or whatever you, whatever you designated. Um, if you come back the next day and you, you, there's something that you, for some reason you need to change it or cancel it. Um, you'll, anytime you come back to this page, uh, the no notification history page, you'll be able to stop the processing as long as it's before this date. Um, so that, that allows you to, it allows you to, to cancel it out if, if you uh, get, if you have it scheduled, but you don't want it. Um, <clears throat> you can again go to notification history. And then you're going to see also another way to, to cancel it would be to go to this dismiss. This is another way to cancel it if like you, you, you walk away from it um, and come back into the system a couple of days later and want to get rid of it and want to stop having it go. Um, that's what that does. That's how you cancel the sending process. Um, you can see this one, Rosie has pointed out, you're gonna see a waiting confirmation. That's made, that means that you started it, but you didn't finish confirming that you wanted to go. The schedule scheduling process, um, you probably exited out before it got finished uh, loading all of those. Um, you'll probably wanna go ahead and go in there and uh, click send and it will, it'll, 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 it'll allow it to keep on uploading it. Okay, so what's what's coming up next? Um, so the next the next thing after this is you're gonna actually be able to see your results through the um, analyze tab and also through your dashboard. The analyze tab allows you to see how many emails you sent, um, how many emails bounced, uh, any requirements that might have been changed, um, all that all that kind of stuff. Um, oh, but this is actually I'm I'm, I'm misspeaking. I'm sorry. This is the site information update widget, which is showing you everything that was updated by your sites. Apologies. Um, so when you go to your dashboard, you're gonna see site information update. And this dashboard is what, what shows you what sites were, what sites changed, how many sites changed something, how many staff were changed, what requirements might've been changed, and then any uploaded new documents. Um, you'll be able to see this either in the additional information available slot requests um, analyze tab, 
or um, through the, uh, the widget on your dashboard. Okay, um, so all these other dashboard widgets are also gonna start showing up once your slot request goes out. It won't, you won't see anything but the update, um, the updated site information until that point. Um, so when we, when we, we say your dashboard, it, it really shows up on the top of your dashboard um, because it's considered something that you, um, you know, that you might need to attend to quickly or, or whatever, um, or that you need to, that you need to process in some way. These slots are not automatically going into your system um, necessarily, or you want to maybe publish your first come first serve slots to your students right away. Um, so all these different widgets are, um, we'll talk about how to process some of these things, but these are just really showing you, um, you know, what the most important stuff is in terms of attending to it. <clears throat> okay, uh, you've already seen your own dashboard message that shows you the other webinars that are coming up. Uh, we have additional Tuesday, Thursday tips uh, every Thursday for the March 1st mailing. Um, the other webinars are, are talked about here, and there's also going to be open office hours on the 15th, which is the day before your configuration is due. So if you have any last minute questions, um, you know, come to those office open office hours. That's going to be done through Teams and not through web, go to webinar. Just in case we need to do, um, we can break into a private room. We can do that more easily in Teams than we can through um, go to webinar. So um, you that's just the sort of what you just need to do is just show up to that, and uh, we can we can answer your questions um, as they come up. <clears throat> um, this is just showing you how to um, how to send a support request. So we, we did talk about this a bit ago, but basically you you know you can say what the you know what the support what the problem is and then it'll send it to support. That's if you go to the little guy on the top of the page. You can also just send an email to supportexact.com. Make sure you label it M1M just in case uh, uh, you want to really, because you want to really focus on that in your agent, that the support agents will will be sorting for it for the, the slot request or the um, M1M when they uh, see any support request in there, that it'll be forwarded to our designated um, M1M team. You can also make sure that you access the help documents, our YouTube channel, online chat, um, and support. Yeah, and the recommendation um, came from our support team. Anytime um, in a support ticket comes in with either a slot request in the subject line or M1M as we refer to it internally, which is March 1st mailing, um, they'll know right away to move it to a specific queue uh, with uh, support agents who work with our slot request specifically. Uh, so if you add that to your subject line, it'll help us um, tag your, your ticket faster and get you support faster. Uh, so it's a recommendation if you'd like to add that to your subject line, um, just so that we can better assist you. Yep. And then we just wanna thank you for attending today and see if you have any questions. So you can spend the rest of the time either re-demonstrating re an activity or, um, or, uh, or just at, or answering any questions that you might have. I did get a couple of questions about the slot request preference form. Um, okay. So I know that we have two deadlines and that um, I know um, can be confusing. So the uh, deadline for your slot request preference form is, and let me go back to the slides here just to make sure I give you the oh. correct date. Is it, is it on here? I think it's. Um, I can find it. Let me, maybe not. Let me see. I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. It's also on their dashboard. Yes, um, okay, so the, the dashboard side. So the deadline for your slot request preferences is January 24, and that is going to be just that survey form. Um, and Becca, I don't know if you wanna show it one more time since we did get a couple of questions sure. asking about that. Um, so by that January 24th deadline, all we really need to know is how you will be sending out your emails. So we don't need you to create your sessions. We don't need you to finalize your configuration by January 24th. We just need you to fill out that survey for us um, since that help us plan out how we'll be supporting you. And so Becca is going to show you how you can access that. Um, when you create a new slot request, you'll be taken to the basic configuration section and that's where that form is. If you've already created it, you'll simply go to slot request, edit, 
edit and then you'll see that form that's going to be that second box there on the screen can you see my can you explain my screen right now yes mm -hmm. and so you, this you can see that yeah, and so this form here is what's due by January 24. Uh, everything else you can, you don't have to worry about. Um, if you're not there yet, if you're really busy, that's totally fine. All we really need is that second form on this page uh, to be complete by January 24th. The February 16th deadline refers to the entire configuration. So that to-do list that you see on your far right hand menu, all of that should be completed by February 16th uh, because our team will go ahead and start to review your configurations um, and you know just make sure that we're all ready to go so um, that's that those two deadlines for you right and it, let, let, it lets them let contact you if anything needs to be changed and it gives that amount, the amount of time that might be needed to make any corrections or changes um, so nobody's like rushing at the last minute to get that done All right, any other questions? We have a few more minutes to spare. Yep. I know a lot of you guys have been asking about the recording of this webinar as well. Um, and fortunately, GoToMeeting, I think when I initially set up, I thought that the, there was an email notification that always goes out one hour after the webinar ends. Um, and I believe that the recording was attached to it and it was not the last time, uh, but I did update that uh, to include the recording of the webinar in the follow-up email. So you will be receiving a follow-up email one hour after the webinar ends uh, with a, a link or some way to view the recording of today's webinar. So that will be available to you. And I have someone else asking here, what is the thread for slot request preference form, but I'm not sure what that means. Um, Beck, do you know what is the thread for slot request preference form? I'm not sure what that would be. No, and, um, yeah, um, Laura, I can go ahead and take you off mute if you'd like to elaborate on your question a bit more. Um, just want to make sure that we answer your question go ahead can you Barbara. hear me okay yes no I, I just what I just meant by thread was how did you access how did you get to this slot oh before? right okay that's all sorry I can I, no that's perfect that's perfect um okay so if we if we're coming in from the dashboard um you're going to go to the slot request down here it's uh about halfway down the the right the left menu if you click on slot request it's going to take you to the slot request landing page. If you've never done a slot request before, it's going to be blank. You won't see anything here. But if you've done one before, uh, you'll click on the edit button to get to the slot request preference form. However, if you've never done one before, um, or if you're creating a new one, you're going to go to create new request. And it's going to show up if you click that. And it's at the bottom of that page right here. OK, thank you. Help. Appreciate that. No, no problem at all. And once you guys start that slot request form, once you click save and next, um, that will automatically save your preferences and it will generate a ticket on our end. Um, so um, you just have to make sure you click save and next and that will take care of it for you. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and it sends us, it's an email to support that basically schedules, you know, Let's us know that you want to use the slot request and, and whether or not you want help with it. <clears throat> and a little off topic, but it seems like a few of you um, that were that are here today also attended the update site information webinar. Um, so if you are wanting to get that recording, I did have a few people who have commented they want that. So if you also want that recording, just drop a, a comment in the questions box. I will be taking a list and just sending that out to everyone after this webinar, um, since um, a few of you wanted that recording. Any other questions anybody might have or want to see a, um, anything demonstrated? Let me see. I'm getting a few comments, but they're all about I the think recording. People the recording. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so definitely we'll be sending that to all of you. Let's see here. Um, I think it's all just. 
Yeah. You know, so the previous one was. Okay. Yeah. That's all I'm seeing too. There's a raised hand. But they've probably been raised for a while. Um, oh, yeah, the so they also had questions. Okay. All right. Let's see here, just making sure. Okay, all recording questions, um, but um, doesn't seem like we have any other questions. Okay. Cool. Well, thank you all for your time today and thanks for your understanding, um, or thanks at least for your patience uh with the our sound and and presentation uh issues that we had today um i, I half of the time i feel like i don't know I, why am i in technology if i can't figure out how to get my go to meeting to work but um that's not your fault it's it's uh appreciate your but i do appreciate your patience so all right everyone uh beck actually sorry one more question oh sorry <laughs> um, yes if yeah. you go back to the slot request preference uh, survey or form, sure. someone is yeah. asking what needs to be typed into the boxes with the asterisks. Okay, sure. Um, let me go ahead and pull that up. So the asterisks, um, if if they're grayed out, nothing. Um, if they're open, um, the the date basically. So and then in here uh, in this last part. It's your name or whoever the name is of the person who's going to be the main the main point of contact for the slot request. So whoever is you know whoever's working um, the most on it, <coughs> their phone number and the best email to contact them at. Um, so those are the those are the required fields. Um, if you like I said like if you say um, I'll be scheduling my own. This is grayed out. You you don't need to select it. Um, you don't need to put anything in here. But if you said I want, I would like support to send my slot request emails, then this um, asterisk box uh, makes you um, select the date and time. So then you would select March first, twenty twenty two, and then whatever time of the day, a.m. or p.m. that you want it to be sent. Um, and that's what that's what that uh, required field is for. Awesome. Makes sense. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Chris, for that okay. good question. One last question here. Um, do we create a new slot request every year or can we just edit the previous one that we have and update the dates? So, yeah, you want to create a new one every year, but you can clone the one that you did before. But if you don't, um, basically, I would highly say do not use the same one as last year, because what happens then is it just uh, it kind of bulks all your slots into one and it gets super confusing. So um, yeah, new new one every year. But if you don't um, want to start, you know, from scratch, you'll just be able to clone um, the one that you one of the ones that you made previously. So when um, when I say that, basically what happens is it says, you know, create new slot request. If I want to copy an existing slot request, um, and that's going to copy some of the same stuff that you know that you just configured, um, it's going to pull it up, and you can see, okay, well, how did I do this one? Um, you can click on it and see what it looked like, um, what 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 you had it configured like. So this is that that section where you can see, okay, well, I did all this. Now you'll be able to change this information um, afterwards, you know. But um, in the in right in in the right now, um, you'll have to just see, okay, what did I do here? All right, you know, then you can and you can decide. I do you, you do want to clone? Um, so it's helpful, especially if you've got. You know, like a lot of information in the contact information section, um, so to clone it like that. But um, but yeah, do not do not copy or do not change the dates on a current slot request um, or a previous slot request. Sorry, not current current spine. Um, that's All a very right. good question too. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so it does seem like those were all the questions, but if you have a very last minute question, feel free to add that in. But otherwise, thank you everyone for joining today's webinar. Yes, thanks everybody. All right, everyone, I hope you have a great rest of your day.